Hi everyone. What's up everyone? <laughs> we are live, live, live with a special, special interview today. We do have a special guest today. First off, we'll say hi to whoever's in the chat right now. We got Miss Baltimore. What's up, Destiny Schaefer? How are you? And we got a few more. I'm sure we'll be joining in shortly. If you guys have questions, just throw them in the chat. We'll get to them if we can. We are interviewing Gabriela Castillo today. She is um out on the West Coast. She's 100% wholesale. So she has um a Poshmark closet that she's almost 100% wholesale. And she says she has a few things that are new with tags that um don't quite fall under the wholesale umbrella. But, but she owns her own area. very successful boutique. I'm Poshmark. And I know a lot of you guys have been looking for that information. So we are going to dive into everything tonight and um, get going. So if you have questions, throw them in the comments. Karen's going to be monitoring them and uh, we'll get to them when we can. But I do have a list of questions I'm going to ask her as well. What's up, Kimberly and Elisa? How are you guys doing tonight? Yay, hello. So Gabriella, why don't you introduce yourself and say hi to everyone? Hi, hi. my name is Gabriella Castillo. I am from... Tijuana, Tijuana Mexico, Mexico, and I, I posh full time across, across the border, the border in, San in San Diego. Awesome. So, um, yeah, we just learned that. Yeah, we right? just learned that. I thought I, I knew you were in the West Coast, but I thought you were you're based out of uh, California, California, which you say you do your business mm -hmm. in San Diego. So, how is that going back and forth between Mexico and California? Is that easy or is that tough or? It's really easy, actually. There's a trusted travel program called. Um, global, um, global entry, entry basically, basically if you, you have, have no, no criminal prior and you and pay a, a fee every, every six years, year, you get you expedited, expedited um, um, entry to the United, United States. States. Uh, but it's, it's great. great. Oh, good. Because I'm thinking like you have to go through a border and it's this hassle just to like ship a few packages every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow, that's dedication. But that sounds well, like it works good for you. So we're hearing a little bit of feedback from the chat right now. There's an echo going on. Um, I know you have your earphones on. I turned the volume down on our end. Is there still an echo, guys? Because sometimes the chat needs to catch up. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll keep going. If there's still an echo, we'll figure that out. I can fix that oh, easily well, enough. But, um, so, uh, so tell us a little more about yourself, Gabrielle, and how you first found Poshmark and got started there. Well, I was, I graduated from law school when I was 22. I'm 25 right now. And I just always really loved fashion. So when I graduated law school, I went into the fashion program at my local community college to study to be a buyer. And I was, I wanted to get rid of a pair of Christian Louboutins uh, next boyfriend got me. And I was talking about it in the classroom and they were like, get on Poshmark, sell them on there. And it just like snowballed out of that. And I went to, I really liked selling. So I went to fashion school in LA at FITM, which is the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising. And I studied merchandising and marketing, which really helped with, you know, sourcing and trend forecasting. That's awesome. So I got, we, we do have a, we still get an echo. Do you have your, by any chance, do you have your volume on your computer on? I forgot to have you mute that if you have it on. Oh, uh, what do you mean? How am I going to be able to hear you then? You uh, you have your earphones your on, so it should still pick up. You, yeah, yeah. You just got to mute the computer, and that should fix the echo. Like your external speakers. Oh, yeah, they're off. They're completely off. Okay. Uh, oh, I thought that was the problem. Uh, guys, I'm sorry there's an echo. We're trying to figure it out. Um, We're going to keep pushing forward, and we'll keep trying to do everything we can to fix that. Um, it's only happening when she talks. Yeah. Says everybody. Um, <sighs> Huh. Um, do you want me to try it like with the external speakers on or with another kind of earbud? Um, you can hear us in the earbuds, right? Yeah, completely. Okay. Yeah. No, we'll just keep going forward. We, I, I, I don't understand. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on, but we'll keep going forward. Because usually uh, it's like a microphone picking up the external, you know, the computer talk. Sorry about the technical then, difficulties, everyone. <laughs> um, so How about I if I speak earbud, closer to the... To the computer? Is it better? Um, do you have access to your earphones Bluetooth settings? Because maybe the microphone on your because yeah. I know those earbuds you can take calls with, right? And there's a microphone. Oh, we got someone saying it seems a bit better. Uh let's get some more confirmation from here. <laughs> Just uh I'll ask you another question, Gabrielle, yeah. and we'll go from there. So when you first started selling on Poshmark, um, what kind of items did you sell and where did you find them at? Uh the first time I sold um on Poshmark boutique or normal Poshmark. 
Boutique or normal? Uh, normal Poshmark. Normal Poshmark. Oh, well, you know I was, uh, those, those pairs of Louboutins, and I used to wear a lot of Nasty Gal, so it was very trend and youth focused, and that's how I found a lot of the wholesale brands I work with now. Oh, did you ever do thrifting or sourcing or anything like that from thrift stores, or was it all just um, building relationships with brands and, and like that? Well, the only time I sourced outside of wholesale was I bought a palette of new with tags, um, Nasty Gal, and all the brands I work with now. And that really helped, um, like, cushion my closet with different things. That a lot of postures bundle one piece new with tag and one piece boutique. And I lower the price a lot. So they can get the boutique items see the quality and just trust me as a seller. Hmm. Oh, get your name out there. Yeah. Make sure because some people have some trust issues, you know, um, especially when they don't, a picture doesn't always tell you a thousand words, <laughs> you know, and it might look fabulous. And then you get it and you're like, eh, this isn't so great. So that's very smart. It's like get the product in somebody's hands so they know and trust that this is actually a really good product. So I did get more from the chat, Gabriella. Just uh, they're saying when you lean into the mic, it gets a little worse. So if we lean back, it oh, should be computer. manageable where we can handle it, and that should be good. <laughs> she yeah. Went so far back. Awesome. I'm like, what? <laughs> Are we good now? Should I go? We're like, good enough. Over we're, here. We're gonna, I've heard people say it's not even that bad, so they can get through it and all that. So we're it's gonna, just when you lean closer yeah. to the computer, they say it gets worse. All right, so we'll keep pushing through. So um, how long did it take you to move? to full on wholesale and boutiques when you uh, from when you started? Um, it was two years being on Poshmark that I went into full on boutique. Okay. So two and years about. To build your brand. Destiny, she can't turn off the PC mic because she has a, it's the only mic she has. Yeah, that stinks. <laughs> Do you, um? so I have a question for, or you wanna ask that Karen? Yeah. So. Do you shop from the wholesale on portal on Poshmark for your boutique items or do you find them on your own? I'm at least not exactly that. sure how it works. I did that twice. I shopped twice on the Poshmark wholesale portal. First time, it took me three years to sell one item. And the second time, I rebought because it was selling so good. But some, another Posher bought the same style and sold it sold even it under cost, cost price. price. So, so it severely it dropped the, what, what I could I ask for it. So you bought something that did fabulous. So you re up because that's a common thing with boutiques. If something's like on fire and you got a good product, you're going to keep restocking that product until that fire burns out. And then you restock and someone else got their paws on the same item and undercut you. And that really hurt your margins is what you're saying. I can, I see that happening a lot with the wholesale portal because everybody for the most part has access to it. So we did get a tip about the echo from our viewers again. Um, I forgot your earbuds have a microphone in them. So try muting your computer microphone and let's see if your earbud microphone picks up the sound and we'll see if that fixes it. Yeah, because those are the Apple ones that you can yeah. phone calls with. Yes. The old ones. Okay. Is it better? All right, so you are you muted the PC mic? I, I mean, I put it. Um, okay, get let's get some help. How do I mute the the Mac mic? You're gonna go up to your um, the top bar on your Google Hangouts page. Click on the microphone, and it's gonna it'll turn red. It's the it's the picture of the microphone with the slash going through it. The second icon. All right, so can we hear you? Say something. Nope. Ah. You're going to have to turn the mic back on. It's not working. Can't hear you. Okay. Now All right, we're just going to have to go through with the echo. I'm sorry, guys. Um, You can't keep going on this forever. I apologize. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. So um, how do you source for your products? And stock um, a couple of months in with pre-orders. And I also go to the fashion district in Los Angeles about twice every month to just be there and see the new things as they come in, get first dibs and just uh, see 
the thing is that if you are very um, vigilant, you see um, five brands of the same style, and one of them has it cheaper. So you buy from that, and you know right. what's coming in style. So it helps being on trend and being cost efficient. So that's good. You actually get to to go and see some of this live in like the fashion district. I know um, you were talking about saying that there was um, one that goes on in New York City once in a while. Trade shows. Yeah, trade you shows. go to trade shows as well, right? Yeah, that, that's amazing that you get that opportunity to actually see and talk to the vendors. It's not just like a website, click, click, go, go, you know? And do you think that really, really benefits your business? Yes, of course. I recommend people that aren't near big cities because there are trade shows from UBM Fashion. That's UBM Fashion in Las Vegas, New York, Atlanta, and Dallas. Oh, so pretty much everywhere, anyone can get to those trade shows. That's exactly, pretty. Exactly, but you, you, you need and that, that. that that information was UBM Fashion. Yes. Yes. Yep. And okay. So everybody, go check out UBM Fashion. They'll give you a list of trade shows closest to you, and you can guys can go get a chance to go source for some wholesale product there as well. Um, there, I I heard they're a lot of fun. We're definitely gonna go to one, and I think we're gonna try and hit the one up in New York. So unfortunately, it's in February, right after the baby comes out. So we're gonna go to the one. <laughs> After the baby comes out. <laughs> so um, now to, to source this product and to go to these trade shows, you need a reseller's license, correct? Yes. To enter the trade shows for free, you need your a seller's permit. So how easy was it to obtain one of those? And was the process difficult or was it a breeze or, or can anybody do it? Or do you need to have your finances in order and all that stuff? Or tell us a little bit about the process. It was super easy. You just go to your state's revenue revenue department online and just go like search in the website a seller's permit and there's an online link to register for it. And they ask for your well, your driver's license and all like all your information, but nothing too deep and it's not that expensive. It's like eighty dollars, fifty dollars. It just depends on your state. Right. And I know in, in every state, it's called something different. Here in Connecticut, it's called the sales, sales, and, and, sales, and, tax, and, sales and use tax or something like that. <laughs> and in, in uh, out where Gabriella lives, it's called, what is it called? A seller's permit? Yes, a seller's permit. So if you do a broad search for seller's permit, you should be able to find information in your state regarding how you can obtain one of those. If you guys don't have one yet, it's definitely worth it to go out and get one because not only can you... um. Uh, not only can you source at these trade shows, but now you're going to get opened up to all the online uh, sourcing avenues that require you to have a license as well. That aren't the wholesale portal. That aren't portal. wholesale portal on yeah. Poshmark. Because you're going to need that number in order to make purchases. Now, if you live in a city, and it doesn't have to be a big city, it doesn't have to be like NYC or anything like that. Most cities that call themselves a city has an, a local IRS branch. You can, you can even walk into them and ask them for help if you're really confused. They're sitting there all day, like at a computer doing nothing. I, I promise you. Yeah. <laughs> They'll help so, you if you're stuck. <laughs> you got a question from Kimberly Robinson. Do you have to have a business registered, Gabriella, to, to, to do wholesale? No, you don't. Um, I did go through the um, process of creating my LLC, but that's not necessary to get a seller's permit because um, it's a very basic um, process. But it depends on each state. So just be vigilant in searching your state, what it requires. But it was very, very easy for me. Okay. It does depend on the state. In Connecticut, I actually had to name my business and register my business name. And it doesn't have to be an LLC. It doesn't have to be an S Corp or whatever it is. I, I'm not, like doing business, like doing business as. You could be a single sole proprietor. Um, and so every state's different. You know, um, if you're really confused, ask a... As someone that does yeah. taxes as a CPA, I couldn't think of a <laughs> pregnancy brain a CPA or somebody that may know a little bit about it, but every state's a little different. But that's, you're right. It's not hard. The paperwork was a breeze. You know, even just naming my business, that the, the paper was like the shortest thing. And I just had to sign it, pay a little fee, and bam, here I am. You know, it, it's, it's easy. I think people get scared away from like having to do all this like paperwork. And, it, and it's really not. So what, and I have another question coming in. Was it CBM Fashions? Was that the name of the website you recommended to go check out? UBM Fashion. UBM? They're also UBM. Okay. U, B as in boy, M as in margarita. That's 
And the uh, one I go to, I go to is, is Magic, and it's WWD, so Women's Wear Daily Magic. All right, so go check all that out, and um, we'll definitely uh, we'll we'll definitely give you some great information. Once yeah. this video goes live, because we're live right now, but once it posts to YouTube after we're done and ended the video, I will talk to Gabriella, and we will add those links to the description for later use. You guys yep. can come and copy paste to your web browsers. So I know you guys are all trying to scribble things down or type notes somewhere and try to remember. <laughs> so Gabriella, how do you determine um how do you determine and set your price points for a particular item once you purchase the item from the wholesale supplier? At the trade shows that I go to, there are a lot of panels where you learn from industry experts. And one industry expert said the thing that most has gotten me most success, he said, don't work with the markup very strictly. When you see an item, look at it with your customer's eyes and think and ask yourself, what would they pay for it? What is it worth to them? So basically, a lot of boutiques go with a strict um 50 percent markup or just um 2.9 percent markup it just depends but i personally i price according to what i think an item is worth some profit margins are bigger than others and some are smaller but at the end you just need to find a way to even everything out so your collection is cohesive is complete and it's profitable now, do you do comps on similar items, like similar styles and similar, like if you have a sparkly skirt, do you do a comp on other sparkly skirts to see what they're selling for to set your price point? Or do you really come up with it on your own and just set because your own price points? Because the manufacturer says um, suggested, suggested retail, retail. yeah. So I know a lot of people take that really to heart and, you know, it gives you a starting point, I guess. But yeah, what's your process with that? Some uh, wholesalers are very strict with the MSRP, which is the manufacturer's suggested retail price, but some are much more lenient and it's just depending on, well, each person that buys or each boutique that buys. But in terms of comps, I do check comps, but it's very hard on Poshmark because a lot of um, the brands I work with are in the brands that other poshers that have boutiques work with. So I do look at comps but since i have a lot of customers that are repeat customers they know the prices i manage and at the same time when you decide to open your own store boutique online you need to you need to set your target market and you need to see like for example my target market is young women and they're straight out of college so it's very it's like price to them to what they're earning but if, for example, you guys that sell the Blazers, your target market is men that are established in life and they can pay a higher price point. So that's how you price the right item. Right. Exactly. That makes so much sense. Know your audience. Oh. I remember we were talking a lot about that when we had our, we all had our big talk at Posh Fest. This is how we know, Miss Gabriella. <laughs> and it's really just knowing your audience and knowing how much they're ready to shell out for anything almost. Yeah. You know, and sometimes there's a little learning curve for that, I'm sure. I'm sure you didn't know this right off the bat. Once you're like, I'm going to do this. You dove right in. It wasn't like instantaneous knowledge. It took you a little bit, right? Yes, of course. And it, I mean, you don't need to study fashion to go into it and to learn that. But it's, I really, this is something I tell everybody who asks me, just know who you're selling to. And that will help with choosing what you sell as well as pricing it, as well as marketing it. Oh, you're not typing. <laughs> He's oh. trying to type. <laughs> That's awesome information. Yeah, so can you say your Poshmark closet name for I'm typing the it audience? in the chat. Aww. Oh, it's kind of where I got it. I typed it in the chat. So we're good. Um, so let's see, how do you determine a potential item's profit or uh or um the rate of sale based on when you go out to buy that that product can you determine that can you determine pen potential profit and how fast an item is going to sell or it just depends and it's a big learning curve oh my god there are some things that have been sitting in my boutique and in my inventory room forever and there's i know how that is <laughs> that you take you take the risk on it and it just it sells so fast. So what? since this is my second year in business with um, wholesale, 
I look back to last year's best and worst sellers, and I take into consideration the price, the silhouette, and the trend. So when, for example, I sold a lace maxi dress last year, and it went super fast. I bought it again this year in another color, and it's selling good because I know that a lot of people respond positively to that. So having a history definitely helps, but I think it's important to first be on top of the trend. So Google um, spring, summer 2019 trends, make a list, see how you can incorporate those trends into your closet and for your target market. And that's definitely going to help because I hopped on the animal print train for fall and I have saw, I think I have sold over a hundred pieces of animal prints in skirts, dresses, pants, um, everything. I mean, because you just, I knew that going into the season. So you forecasted that trend and then you knew it was going to be a thing. So you went out and bought a whole bunch and it worked for you. So that's why it is really important to know what trends are going, going on regardless of if you're wholesale or if you're um, a boutique or if you're sourcing through a thrift store and selling used clothing, you always want to know the trends. Cause if you're buying, if, if the color is Brown and you're buying a bunch of green, you're not going to sell anything because the hot color is Brown. <laughs> so if you know the trends, it, it helps with not just wholesale, but it also helps with, with every aspect of the business in general. So and having the items for when the seasons change, this is huge. You don't want to say, okay, well I know that animal prints are going to be, important, like great for the fall and fall is in three weeks. You want to be thinking about what's hot for the fall when you're like 95 degrees on the pool. Like you need to think about this way beforehand. So you get the product in and get it photographed up detailed to your customers by the time they learn that animal prints are hot. Right. I just like, this is just throwing it out there, but I'm receiving my collection of swimwear at the end of this month and yep. I bought it and I, um selected it the silhouettes and everything in i think october so the the in terms of fashion and wholesale and all that you work months in advance exactly and that's i think karen does something very similar with her bathing suits as well she buys them like pretty much right after it's like happy new year yeah she, you looking? she looks for them and buys them and then gets them <laughs> in and that's her big money maker for the summer and it, it really makes a big difference like We've had we before we um before we went full time and she was just doing this on a part time basis and wasn't doing anything wholesale. Her summers would be dead. There'd be nothing. Well, there'd be, not like you know, dead. well that's dead. There'd be no. There'd be barely any sales coming through. She got these wholesale bathing suits in, and all of a sudden she's making fifteen hundred bucks a month just Same off of bathing happened, suits. Though. I've had some bathing suits that were like there until the next year. You know, bad calls. Maybe I didn't. I thought it was trendy and it wasn't. And I had other ones like fly off the shelf where I already had to put like pre-orders in for them, you know? So you really do have to like pay attention to like exactly. what's moving and what's not and try not to make the same mistake all over again. Cause there still will be mistakes no matter how much trends you're forecasting. <laughs> so we got another question from one of our viewers. Uh, we'll ask this to Gabriella too. So do you list Gabriella all year long or by season? Do you keep with the season? So do you, you do, uh, do you list any item, you know, like a winter item in the summer or do you go season by season? In terms of my boutique and wholesale items, I do them by season. So for example, I, you go a little bit before the seasons change. For example, as soon as it was starting to be chilly, I listed a few sweaters. And then it started becoming a little bit more chilly and I put in the jackets and the new year stuff. And what I do with the stock, I don't sell from the season. Um, for example, um, my first season I did wholesale was last fall winter and I had stock that didn't sell. So I relisted it this fall and winter and it sold. But if I would have done that in summer, I don't think it would have, it would have sold because for example, who searches for velvet in summer? Right. <laughs> so I don't. it's good to have it in the closet. It's always good to have it and not take it out of your closet. Because I did sell a velvet long sleeve romper in August and I was like, okay. But um, it's good to just be very true to like what the average season is. In California, it was hot until like two weeks ago. So Obviously, I don't move my closet with California weather because that would just be no. 
but you, you do need to be on top of um you do need to have cohesiveness with what's happening in the world as well right so um do you do you make your listings your winter listings in the summer you make them not for sale or you delist them or you just leave them at the bottom of your closet or how do you go about that i put all my boutique items at the top of my closet no matter what but the newer ones are at the top of the top so if you go to my closet on the top, it's going to be all the boutique and on the bottom of the boutique, it's going to be the things from summer, but they're still there. I'm still sharing them. I'm right. never going to stop sharing them. And I do um, list them separately. Sometimes to see, sometimes people just don't buy boutique because they are, they just think it's wrong. So I just put in you with tags and sometimes it's all like that. You just, you, you just resort to plan B and then to plan C and then you list it again as new boutique and you go back to plan A. And it sells. Trust me, it sells. So yeah, when I I'm a firm believer in relisting, and I'm not just talking wholesale and boutique. But my first experience when I had my boutique certification and I went to go relist, my issue was with the platform. Um, I had sold two of the items out of the whole bundle, you know, and I wanted to relist it. It had lasted through the three seasons. It was time to be relevant again, and I wanted to relist it, but it wouldn't let me delete the listing because of how Poshmark was. So I had to bring everything down to zero, like inventory down to zero, and it made it not for sale, and the price down to zero. I had to edit it, but I couldn't actually delete it. I, I hope that's changed. I haven't had to relist a boutique item since, <laughs> but it was kind of difficult. I know some. It, it's not just like one item, because if you sold something, it's like an active listing or something. It was really strange. I hope you know what I'm talking about, and I hope it's changed since then. Um, I do see that, for example, when you sell, like if you have six lists, if you have six items inside your boutique listing that every time you sell, it pops up as a separate sold listing. So you can't edit it and change it. And your normal listing, you can change it up. But I, I don't think I've ever, I, I think I have deleted a boutique listing, but not one that has sold one. Remember the listing I told you that I bought from the wholesale portal that took me like three years to sell one of them? I did delete and relist it, and it, I haven't tried to delete it again. So I tried that. Yeah, I was just really confused, you know, like, why is this happening? But I figured out a way around it, you know, so editing the listing down to like zero inventory, zero medium, zero smalls or whatever, and then zero price. And then it makes it not for sale. And then you bury that. <laughs> bury, bury. So there is a way, because I know that will be some important information down the road for someone who's listening to us right now. Relisting's good. So guys, remember, while we're talking with Gabrielle, if you're new here, definitely click on that thumbs up button and give us a like and subscribe to our channel if you like this information. Um, we are doing a mystery box giveaway. You have until the end of today to get on the email list before we pick a winner for that mystery box. So if you click the first link in the description, you'll get on our email list. And um, we're going to pick a winner for the mystery box right from the email list. You'll get emails from us from time to time letting you know what we're doing and what's going on uh, with the Thrifty Flamingo. But um, you'll also get a chance to win that mystery box, which is four hand-picked sourced items from us that you guys can sell for pure profit because you don't pay for them. So if you want to get a chance to win that box, definitely get on our email list and um, we'll we pick, pick a winner. It. We will pick a winner tonight right. after the live. Uh, we'll we actually not right after the live stream. We'll we pick a winner. Right after Christmas. We'll pick a winner. Um, we'll pick a winner tomorrow to so huh? give you guys some time to get on the From email midnight. list. Yeah. So definitely click that first link in the description and check that out. But we'll not be here next week. We're going to Vermont. The so, <laughs> Gab let you know. Gabriella, how long did it take you for your uh, boutique to gain momentum and be profitable? About one year. So the first couple of months was slow. I, it just, I think it was hard for people to trust it, and I have gotten repeat customers, and that really helped. So just a year of being on top of people, not on top of people, but on top of trends, and just like if somebody likes a lot of items you reach out and like, hey, um, I can do great bundles down and things like that. So it was about a year and now I'm very much more comfortable and it's very much more profitable than last year, especially since this time I paid much more attention to the trends and I just learned a lot from the mistakes from the first year. So I think you just need to give yourself a year, a year and a half to learn from the different seasons and how the retail year works. 
Yeah, because I think, you know, some people, like, they're, you know, they're putting a lot of money up for these items, you know, and some people might not be comfortable. They want, like, an instant flip or, like, a really quick return. And reality is it takes time to build yeah, that doesn't happen. Yeah, get return customers, get your name established, have people coming back to you, word of mouth. People saying, hey, go check out this boutique, you know, like it takes a little bit and, and like being vigilant with it and not just saying, ah, oh, it's been a couple of months. I'm in the red. Bye bye. You know, right. You got to gotta stick with it and, and uh, it'll definitely gain mm -hmm. momentum. So uh, on average, how many sales do you ship out a day? Oh, well, it depends. Yes. I, I mean, I'm not here to talk about my own store, but I also have my own website. So I ship out from that also. Yes, I do. Oh, you can share your website shipping. here if you want to. Oh, it's uh, same howtowear.com, H A U T E, the same. I am the same on every platform from Pinterest to like everything. So I sell about, I ship out about four or five packages per day. Um, it's, been a, it's been a good, it's been a good holiday season. And I just really rode the Black Friday, Cyber Monday train on Poshmark. I created, uh, it was really intelligent. I created a listing and I tagged every customer I had from a boutique purchase and gave them a discount. And that reminded people that had bought from me a year ago that, hey, I still sell boutique. The, the things, things are in the are same in the price, price point, point and the same, same style, style and, and it, 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 it did well. That's great, you know, being able to run a sale like that, you know, no matter if it's on your own website or on Poshmark, because yeah, sometimes it, a year is a long time, you know, especially with so many online purchases going on no matter where, you might forget, some people might forget, and it's not that they didn't like it or wouldn't come back to you, they just, it's been a year. So that's really smart saying like, hey, remember me? <laughs> come back and you spend some more money <laughs> Merry <laughs> Christmas you know that was very smart I know a lot of people do run sales Jay ran, ran a sales yep. in his Poshmark closet and it was pretty successful yep. too yeah so yeah so that that's great you know and with the boutique stuff you said with your pricing some things you know you, you might pay less like sell it for less than you bought it for but other things you sell for like three or four times more than you bought it for so it all evens out right so um is there an average price uh, uh average profit that you look to make for each item that you sell or you said your average sale price was around 35 do you have a certain percentage that you want to be profit or, or how do you work that in the average is 40 so i oh, 40, just learned that a couple of months ago so now that i'm going to go sourcing some i'm actually going to go sourcing for spring summer next week LA. LA. So I'm going to look, look for, for a, bigger a bigger profit margin because there, there are some, some things that are amazing, amazing sellers, sellers, but the profit the margin, margin is like $10, $10 and some and things that, that are great sellers as well. And the profit margin, margin is 20. 20. But, but at the, at end, the end of the day, day for example, you just we need to even it out. I always try to just, I'm still trying to, for example, especially on Poshmark where you accept offers, I have, I have a list, a list in, in my Excel, Excel document, document, a profit, profit and loss, loss, and every, every month, month I see the average, average profit, and I'm and trying to gain up on that, that and not and accept as many lower low offers. offers. So, so that, that will, will go into consideration, consideration when I go when sourcing, sourcing next week. week. I do I try and get, get at least, least um, um, I don't know, like half or more. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, Elisa, it's not soda. It's free she, punch. It's free punch. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, is that decaf? No caffeine. So, guys, if you have a question for um Gabrielle that you want to um want her to answer, just throw them in the chat, and we will take care of that for you. I got a few more questions we're going to ask her, and then we'll open the floor up to you guys for questions. So, um, before we jump into the last question of the night from us, why don't you share um one uh one website that our viewers can go to to source for wholesale products right now or one source it doesn't have to be a website but i love la showroom.com okay but you need to be on la showroom you need a seller's license and i think i registered a long time ago you need three invoices or something else i don't remember what it was 
for them to sell to you? I mean, for example, if it's going out of the Poshmark portal boutique, I think you can email them and they are very open. You just need to tell them like, hey, this is my seller's license and I've done wholesale, but on Poshmark, these are my own voices. And it's great because lashowroom.com has I like a hundred wholesalers on that website, different price points, different styles, and you just can get get it shipped to you if you guys don't live near any of the cities we talked about in the, in terms of the trade shows. You just need to check, for example, with a company, a wholesale company, like, hey, what happens if I don't like the product you shipped out? And let be very, very vigilant, vigilant on their return, return policies because, because I've, I've had, had companies, companies that are very understanding, understanding like, okay, okay, if you didn't, didn't like it, it, send it back, back or come sell it and wrap it back. back. And, I've and I've had companies that are like, hey, well, well if you didn't like it, like that, that is that too bad. bad. You need to keep it. So that's that's cool. Yeah. So LASHowrooms.com. Um, most of those wholesale wholesale providers require you to have a couple of invoices before you make purchases, right? Yes. Also, um, so, for example, so I live in I live near LA. I lived in LA for a while, and I go up to the to the showrooms for the wholesale brands, and it's very easy. But all those wholesale showrooms have their website, and you can see the same thing I'm seeing online. And you just go to their website. They're gonna ask for your uh, tax ID or your seller's permit or your business license or uh, invoices, a screenshot of your website or a picture of your storefront. It just varies and depends on different wholesalers. Some wholesalers don't like working with, with people on Poshmark and some don't mind. It just, you just need to ask and you just need to be um, present and with, with different wholesalers so you know who works with you. Right. Build relationships and know who you should be going to and who's not going to give you a second look because, oh, they only sell on Poshmark. You know, I, I can see some people being a little snotty over that because these people sell to big stores, too, like not just little boutiques. Some of them sell to like department stores, I'm sure. Right. Yes. And I've, I've had in, I have encountered um brands that i don't want to name because they're very popular that they were just like no and they didn't even give me the second look but a lot of the brands i and this is another way i've gotten customers to trust me is that i say like hey the brand i work with is sold on Nordstrom, it sold it sells at bloomingdale's it sells on lulu's and it used to sell on acid so that's the type of quality you're gonna get and it's true I've had, I've had, um, I've fought with huge commercial um, stores over products, literally. So it's, that's funny sometimes. I mean, they don't, I don't fight directly with them, but it's like I'm with the wholesale and they're like, well, I'm sorry, but this huge billion dollar brand bought out of the stock. I'm like, hey, well, my invoice is right here. Like, oh, like, like you're going to give some of that stuff to me. It's, it's, I mean, <laughs> it's, it, you just, you, it's very, every day is different when you are working with those people. You just need to be strong and just need to realize that you start small, but eventually you're just going to, you're going to get bigger. Awesome. Yeah, I've seen that in a lot. So some listings, you know, sold at on Nasty Gal, sold at Nordstrom, you know, so it, it's not just no name stuff. It's, it's quality. Some of it's quality stuff. Hi, Wade. Hey, Wade. <laughs> What's up, buddy? <laughs> Sorry, in the middle of the sentence. Hello, hello. <laughs> uh, so um, now I, I had a question that I didn't have on the list that I didn't send to you. So it's an easy question, though, so I'm sure you'll be able to answer it. Do you source um any name brand wholesale? Do you do any like you know uh, name brand designers like Burberry or anything like that, or do you do all off brands or or um or brands that aren't so known out there? Well, the brands, I do work with brands that are, I don't work with high priced brands. And I also, the brands that I work with are more, well, since the price point is significantly like less than big stores, I mean, big name brands. Um, well, the brands that I work with, they sell at big department stores, but they're not like huge name brands. Right. They're very, um, not not necessarily fast fashion in the sense that they're useless after two, three wears, 
but it's, it's just brands, brands that some, some people know, people but very few people, people know. know. Mostly, um, um, oh, oh, you know, the you thing know is that, that, for example, um, uh, Nasio or, or Lulu, Lulu. They, they buy from the same wholesaler as I do, as I do but, but since they, they buy a higher volume of merchandise, they get private labels. So, so I sell, I the, sell same the same thing, thing as they do, do but they but have they their have label, label on it, on it and okay. I don't. So, so it's funny it's because I do I sell, sell like very popular stuff, stuff but, nobody but nobody knows, knows it's the same thing I sell because, because, because they have a private, private label. label. So you said it's because they buy high volumes, they're able to put Nasty Gal on it instead of whatever brand it is. Is that possible for someone that sells on Poshmark to get to that level one day, do you think, to even want to put their own boutique name on the clothes? I, I didn't even know that was possible. Nasty Gal doesn't work with wholesalers anymore, but they used to. And there are, for example, a lot of wholesalers that do do private labels and some that don't. But um, I spoke with one of my wholesalers the other day about making it um, a private label for me because I thought I was ready for that. And they were like, well, the minimum order is 150 pieces per style or 200 or 300, just depending on the label. And I'm like, please. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's understandable. There's that answer. So, um, like yeah, much. Erica, Laura, I think that she just answered your question. She asked if you were considering private labeling, but it sounds like you got to order big, big quantity to get the private labeling done. So it's, I, I'm sure it's something you want to do in the future, but you're not quite ready to do it yet, right? That's like warehouse uh, size, you know, getting uh, 150 or 200 dresses of the same dress. Oh. <laughs> yes, exactly. I mean, I do want to do that. And for example, the first year, I could barely move six pieces of the same style and like barely. And now I'm moving 24 pieces of the same style, you know? So, I mean, the growth is there and hopefully soon I can do private labels. So I really do want to do that. But, you know, the thing is that if I were to be like, yes, I'm going to private label this. My money, my money is going to be sitting, sitting like, like right, right next, next to me instead of, because, because the customer, the customer always, always wants something, something new. new. Yep. The, the one, one customer is not going to buy the same pair of pants five times. Time. They're, They're going to come back to see what, what else you came up with. I have customers, customers that they get, get super excited for new arrivals because they love the style. So why invest in 200 of the same pieces when you can buy 40, 40 different, different styles, styles and give and variety to customers customer and gain. That's, that's, that's a much, much easier way to gain, gain momentum, momentum, a bigger a customer bigger base, customer and more profit. Because, because if you if, if you 200, 200 pieces, pieces, if 200, 200, 200, if, 200, if, 200 if, if I were to have 200 leopard dresses right, right now, now, that animal, animal print is big, like in a couple of months, they're going to stop selling because they're going to be on to the new trend. You're going to have 150 of them left. Like a little cheetah den in your inventory system. We just got a good question from Moni. Moni? Yep. yep sure. <laughs> you can read it here. You want to read it? Okay, yes. so how many items do you normally order when placing an order, Gabrielle? It depends on how confident I am about the item. So I've had, um, like I said, because the minimum in most wholesalers is six of the same style. Some work with just three. Um, but sometimes uh, the six takes forever to sell. And sometimes I have a gut feeling that it's going to be a good seller. So I order two packs. So that's 12. And then I reorder. So for example, there's a snake print skirt in my closet right now that I'm on my fourth pack because, and I, or I knew it was going to be a good seller and I ordered two packs. They went by and then I, I called them and they're like, we're sold out. I'm like, well, what's happening? And they're like, oh, we're going to get a new cut in the end of, I don't even remember what month. And I was like, just put me on the list for that cut so I can get it. And I got it. You just learn and you just trust your gut. But right now I try to be very cautious when I order. I started working with a new brand and I really underbought. And now that the merchandise is here and I love it and everybody loves it. I can't, I can't reorder, reorder because they they, 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 they manufacture the pieces, pieces that are pre-ordered, so they, so they don't, don't manufacture, manufacture like 8,000 of one piece. They manufacture what they're 
stores order from them, so they have no access inventory. And you just learn. I mean, I recommend to be cautious because you'd rather have things move out super fast and buy something else for your customers to see more stuff. But when you keep, when you start learning about like how fast things move, um, as as like a longer growth, that's when you see like, okay, maybe I can order an extra pack of that. So how, um, how often, I mean, how, what's the time frame from when you order a product to the delivery? Like, do you have to wait a good six weeks to get these items in, or do they come pretty quickly, or does it vary, or? It varies completely. Um, for example, when you go to Magic or a trade show, um, they have, for example, you go into this big um, vendor booth, and every, um, uh, how do you call it, hanger has a different color on the top. And like red is for next month, yellow is for two months out, until six or seven months out. And a lot of the times, the things that are like next month or this month, they call you the week after the trade show. Like, hey, your merchandise is ready. Wow. So like, whenever I go to a trade show, I make a list of like my pre-orders by month and how much they cost and how much they retail for. So I have a control of how much money is coming is going out of my of my business. And, and how much how money, money I expect, I expect to, go to go in. in. So, hmm. for example, some, some wholesalers, wholesalers when they when don't, don't um, when, when they, they don't, don't deliver by a certain time frame, and, and they contact they me after, like, hey, we got those cans that you pre-ordered. I'm like, hey, well, that was two months ago, and I am there. I am well. I am overbought right now. I can't receive those cans. Or if they call you like a month early, they like, hey, I mean, I mean. I think, I think sometimes, sometimes with human, human error, error and all and that, that and right. obviously, like some things take like more time and shipping and, and things like that. that. But, you, but you, you do you get something very soon, soon and something something months out, out. And you just need to take control of that, that so, you so you don't like get, get in the red and your bank account like, hey, you don't have any more money left because you ordered so much merchandise. Now, do like online buying the wholesale. Um, when it concerns the shipping, do, do some of them have a minimum amount that you need to actually order? Like, can I just go to these websites and say, I just want a six pack, just one bunch of shirts, that's it, and and pay shipping? Or do they do I have to make make any kind of minimum requirements in order to get anything shipped to me? No, I mean. For example, like there, there are some things that I need so urgently and I can't go to LA to pick them up that I have them ship it out from LA to San Diego. And it can be one six pack piece and they won't mind. But for example, a lot of retailers on their website have free shipping over $300 for merchandise or something like that. So there's so no there's minimum to get it shipped out to you, but the more you order, the more possibility you have of free shipping. I mean, one thing they taught us at Fitum was like always negotiate, and I came in like guns blazing the first time I went forcing. It was a big fail because they were like, well, no, I was like, but I want free shipping. And they were like, some did do free shipping. I mean, some were really nice and like, yeah, it's your first time. We'll knock a few dollars off the cost of each of each price. And some are like, no, sweetie, you need to check yourself. <laughs> so I don't want free shipping, right? <laughs> so we got a question from Monica G. Besides um Poshmark and your and your own website, which her Poshmark closet is Hot the number two W E A R. So it's H A U T E, the number two. W E A R Hote to Wear, and her website is the same at hote to wear.com. Do you sell anywhere else besides those two um, avenues? Do you have? Do you do Instagram or you do uh, eBay or anything like that? No, I don't do eBay. I have my business Instagram that's going to my website. I once saw a posher link their business Instagram to their posh and have their post be shoppable, which I completely recommend because it it leads to easy sales, but I do a lot of holiday markets and like summer markets with bloggers and that helps a lot to get the name out and to move merchandise that's sitting around. But a bit of the website because my website is new and then the pop up and all my friends are like, we have a, I have a WhatsApp group with all my friends that love my clothes and I just like, hey, I picked this up today, who wants one? And they're like, me. Next question. It says, 
Have you had um, like credit cards, I'm saying credit card or debit cards compromised with any vendors you've purchased from? Like anything shady ever go on? Yes, twice. I am currently waiting on a new card actually and oh. I'm freaking out because I have, okay, you heard it here first. Biker shorts are a big spring summer trend. They already started being with the bloggers and they're just coming in with full force next year, hopefully, if the trend forecasting is right. Say that again. What was the biker shorts? Biker shorts. And I have pre ordered two packs of snake print biker shorts that are amazing and very in tune to my target market. And my card is compromised, so I can't order them until the new card gets here. Oh. The thing I recommend is get a separate card where you only use it to buy merchandise, so that way you have great control over it. Because yes, your card is goes to a lot of us. And I mean, it's 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 one of the downfalls, but if you have good control over it, it's gonna be fine. I you just get a new card from Ocario. Yeah. And it also makes bookkeeping and other, extremely easy. Other tips to do with credit cards, too, is if you're going to be making purchases like this, make sure you're using a credit card and not a debit card because credit cards have protection for you guys. So they're going to protect the buyer uh, on, on their end if there's any scams or anything going on like that. So if you can, if you have the credit and you and you, can, you have the ability to get credit cards, it's definitely beneficial to get a credit card and don't carry a balance on it every month. I, I you know, carry a balance if you want to. I'm not going to tell you how to live your lives, but <laughs> it's it's beneficial to pay that card off at the end of every month and just use that specifically for your business. Do you do that too, Gabriella? Do you use credit cards or do you use debit cards or? I have a, a debit card, but I do agree with what you say. But honestly, all the time, I mean, the two, the two times that I've gotten um, my card compromised, well, Fargo was very good about it, and they returned the money with no problem, and they stopped. Like, it is true with the credit card protection, but even with a debit card, I mean, if you're on top of everything, believe me, the bank will respond to you. So we got a question for you um, from Spend with Jen. She's asking if you could tell us more about linking products within an Instagram post to drive traffic to your Posh Closet or website. I've seen it, but I don't know how to do it. I think it has something okay. to do with your followers, so, I mean, but maybe she can help. <laughs> I, I will show it on my phone. So, Does it matter how many Instagram followers you have? No. I don't. No? Okay. I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but on the IG stories, it's for Instagram profiles with more than 10K followers. But to make your Instagram post taggable, you just need to have a business account, and that business account needs to be connected with a page on Facebook. So on Facebook, if you have a business page, there is a business manager. And you go into a business manager, you click on catalog, and you add all your products to the catalog. And the catalog is then connected to the Instagram. So when you go into your post, can you see? Uh, no, it's it the reflection and stuff, yeah. yeah. So you so have to when do you it go on in Facebook. First. Yes. You need to create the catalog on Facebook and then you need to connect the, your Facebook page to your Instagram page. And when you upload a post, you just put tag products instead of tag people and you tag your product. Oh. And whenever they see it on, whenever they see it on your, like on their Instagram feed, they can click on it and it's a direct link to the, the item that you're selling. That's very, very helpful because, you know, sometimes people will just like something and if a link brings them right there, that's like one step closer for them actually hitting buy. Yep. <laughs> and let that get on my body right now, you know? So we got another question that came in from Barbara Weatherman and she's asking, what are the hot trending colors for spring and summer of 2019? Now, I think I heard that coral was pretty hot right now. Is that true? Well, living coral became Pantone's color of the year, and I love it. It is gorgeous. It is a festive, very tropical color. Like, I see that color, and I just feel like I'm drinking something very alcoholic in summary. So I'm excited about that. Um, I've, I've seen a few of the line sheets that have been sent to me for spring, summer, and I see a lot of neon, a lot of biker shorts. I read that bleach denim is going to be in. I read that nudes are going to be in. Uh, California style um, prints. The I think animal prints are going to go into the new year. 
definitely with different hues and mesh and print. But the thing is that if you guys don't see it in like in everywhere, please don't think I'm wrong. It's just that every retailer decides what brands they're gonna use and what brands don't work. For example. I love, I love and my customers love color. So I'm not going to hop on the new trend. I don't, I don't want, want, my customers don't want to look like Kim Kardashian, like Kardashian um, with the Yeezy. <laughs> they want to, they want something <laughs> fun. They want, they want color, color. They want, they want print. print. So, so I will hop on the neon, neon and I will do biker shorts and I will <laughs> do bleach <laughs> denim. But it just depends on who your target customer is. Just be very vigilant and then of all, of all the trends, trends you see that are coming, that are coming in, in, you're going to be like, like, oh, my customers, my customers are going to like, that trend, but not that one. That one. So then so you decide you which ones you're going to follow. follow. Awesome. So uh, thank you very much, Spend with Jen, for that super chat. I'm glad that she helps you um, clarify you. your uh, your issues with the um, Instagram linking and all that. So I hope that works out for you. Facebook. Facebook. Who would have thought you're in? Ah, <laughs> I knew, you know, to get a business, that's how you get, like, analytics on your Instagram you have to hook up Facebook page to the you know then you could share back and forth I would never have known that you actually had to go back to the root of Facebook to do that though so guys we're <laughs> awesome. getting we're getting ready to wrap up um if you haven't done so already definitely hit the thumbs up button give us a like we appreciate that so much if you're new here subscribe to our channel and click that bell to get notified when we go live and upload other videos and if you want a chance to win that mystery box definitely click the first link in the description enter your email address on the email list and we will be picking a winner uh, tomorrow morning. We're going to send you guys an email. We're going to ship that box out uh, two days after Christmas yeah. on uh, Thursday. And that will th that will be the day we go live again, too. So uh, we'll ship that box out to you guys. I have one more question for Gabriella tonight, and then we're going to end the show. So, um, Gabriella, what is one piece of advice that you could give to anyone out there who's thinking that they want to move from sourcing uh used clothing and move into the wholesale selling that new stuff the new tags what's one piece of advice that you can give to um our viewers that could help them start a wholesale uh, wholesale store i can't stress it enough um learn about your target market so branding and marketing go together for example i'm going to give my example my target customer is young is um she's single she doesn't have kids she is living her best life very she her worries are like college and getting a job and things like that or just like the day-to-day -day. so i market to her i put um uh sex in the city stills or uh, pictures, uh, pictures of drinks and happy hour and i buy stuff that fit into her lifestyle mm. And, and I, I word, word everything, everything according, according to her lifestyle. Her lifestyle. So, so I just, I, my piece I of advice is, is learn the most, the most you can about your target market, market study, study it, it. Shop, shop your competition. competition. So, so um, um, go, go to stores, stores that, that you want, want your story to look like, like see, see what they're what selling. selling. There is there no is shame in that game. See what they're selling, see their price points, see the sales they put out, see the prints they put out. See everything, see everything so you, so you can, can get a clear picture, picture of what, what you want your store to look like. like. And, and trends, trends are for simple. Animal print. I, I my, the mini skirt I'm selling is animal print, snake print. print. It's, it's very, very short. short. So, so my, my, the young, young woman, woman is gonna buy it. I mean, everybody can buy it. Normally, a younger woman is gonna buy it. But if you're selling to mom, buy something that would fit into the life of a mom. If you're selling for the business woman. Buy something, buy something and sell something that's going to sell to that woman, to that man, because, because you, need you need to understand, understand their life, life in, in order, order to get, get things, things that will that sell to them. And, and then, then that, that way, way yeah. it's gonna, they're going to keep coming back. back because because you can't you switch it up on them. Because if I would change all of a sudden what I sell, like the style, nobody's going to come back and nobody's going to trust me anymore. So stick to one thing, stick to that person. Like, like know, know that person, that person better than you know yourself and just like work from that. Great. That's a great piece of advice. You definitely want to know who's buying from you. And that way you can target that audience when you go out and sell more stuff mm -hmm. and buy more stuff. So that's a great um, piece of advice to give to our. My favorite question I like to ask, but he got to ask it. So um, <laughs> that's going to do it for us tonight, guys. Yes, we, uh, Elisa, we will be going live before the new year. We're going to be going live the Thursday after Christmas. 
And I'm thinking since Karen is pregnant right now, we're probably not going to be going out much on New Year's. So you guys, if you're <laughs> if you're not going out on New Year's and you want us to do a special live show at around 11 o'clock on New Year's Eve and ring in the new year with us, let us know in the comments after this video. If we get enough response, we will jump on YouTube live at 11 o'clock and give you a bonus hour live show before the new year and we'll all ring in the new year together and my sparkling cider i'll pop a bottle on uh <laughs> i'll pop a bottle live Apple juice. <laughs> so if that's something you guys are interested in definitely let us know in the comments gabriella thank you so much for coming thank on tonight you. that was an awesome show you did a great job if you want to say goodbye to everyone feel free oh well first of all thank you guys for having me i had so much fun and when you guys said we were wrapping up i was like no <laughs> because i love talking about this because it poshmark gives you the freedom to do a lot with your life. And um, I thank for everyone for the questions. And if I'm wrong about something, hop on my Instagram and let me know. Okay. So because I think in at the end of the day, we're all educating each other, but thank you yeah. for listening. And if you have any more questions, I cannot stress this enough, contact me. I love helping people What's out. What's your Instagram? Is it Hot to Wear too? Yes, yeah. H-A-U-T-E, -E, the number two, W-E-A-R. And if you guys want my personal Instagram, I can give it to you guys from there because it's long. And I don't want to confuse you. Sure. But I, you can call, I mean, like, text me all the time. I'm glad to help. There's room in this for absolutely everybody. Oh, of course there is. Everyone can be a reseller nowadays. I don't I don't agree with the people that like to hide their information and, and, and keep it all secretive. I'm the kind of guy that likes to share everything and make sure everyone can be successful. Because there's a there's there's a piece of pie for everyone out there. It's not just for some and mm -hmm. and um everyone everyone can have a chance to be a successful reseller. So I love teaching. And um, we loved having you on the show. Yeah, we we would awesome. love to have you back again sometime. We'll get a couple of new questions and ask you maybe dive in deeper to the whole wholesale scenario and go a little further than we did tonight. So if you'd like to do that, we might set a show up uh, a little bit later on down the road with you and, and get you on again. Post baby. Of course. I will be at Magic Trade Show in February. So just let me know if you want to do it before or after. Oh, that'd be awesome, and I will yeah. let you know cool. what I Great. see for trends. All right, and if you ever get to the East Coast, let us know. We'll hook up with you and uh, we'll hit New York. <laughs> yeah, queen and king. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us tonight. You guys have a great night, and we will see you in two weeks. We're not going live next week because no. we'll be in Vermont for Christmas, but we will be live the following Thursday after Christmas. We'll so see definitely. Right after Christmas, everybody, yeah. happy holidays. And don't forget, if you want a New Year's show, type it in the comments after this video airs so that we can see how many comments we get. If we get enough, we'll definitely do a New Year's Eve to New Year's Day show for you guys at around 11 o'clock. So you guys have a great night, and we'll see you in two weeks. Yep, bye, guys.